21 people walked into that McDonald's for a quick bite. They never walked out. It was a day that sent shockwaves across the nation. A day that forever changed the way we think about fast food and violence. He was a man driven to the edge by anger and despair. And on that fateful day, he took his rage out on a group of innocent people. This video will take you inside the McDonald's massacre, from the first shots fired to the aftermath of the tragedy. We'll hear from the survivors who lived through the horror and we'll explore the motives of the man who pulled the trigger. In the vibrant 1980s, the United States was riding the wave of an economic upswing, leaving behind the tough times of the 1970s. But beneath this layer of prosperity and peace, a sense of unease was simmering, a growing worry about unexpected violence in everyday places. This undercurrent of fear exploded into a shocking reality with the tragic events that unfolded in San Isidro, a neighborhood nestled in San Diego's embrace. San Isidro, more than just a border crossing, was a community rich in history and pride, often overshadowed by its role as a gateway between nations. It was a place where people lived, laughed and loved, not just passed through. But on July 18, 1984, this vibrant community faced a nightmare that would forever mark its history. James Huberty, a 41-year-old struggling with unemployment and mental health issues, fell through the cracks of a system that failed to hear his cries for help. This failure set the stage for one of the most horrifying incidents of the time. Just days before the massacre, Huberty chillingly hinted to his family about the violence he was about to commit. Dressed in military gear, he walked into McDonald's not for a meal, but to launch a terrifying attack. His indiscriminate shooting spree left men, women, children, and even infants as victims of his unleashed fury. This tragic event shook the nation, forever changing the lives of those in San Isidro and beyond, and raising critical questions about mental health and public safety. The terrifying moments of the San Isidro McDonald's massacre linger in the minds of those who survived. Maria Anelda Diaz, who was entering the restaurant with her young child, remembers the horrifying instant when Huberty brushed past them, his gun spewing devastation. Carla Felix, just an infant at the time, miraculously survived as her mother's hand intercepted a bullet meant for her. In the midst of the pandemonium, 16-year-old McDonald's worker Alberto Leos sought safety with his co-workers. Tragically, their hiding spot turned into a deadly trap when Huberty discovered them. While Alberto managed to survive, he lost his colleagues, an experience that profoundly influenced his future decision to pursue a career in law enforcement. The response to the shocking scene was immediate, yet the terror seemed to stretch on endlessly. Officer Miguel Rosario emerged as a crucial figure in the crisis, his swift decision-making leading to the area's lockdown and a carefully coordinated police response. The nightmare finally ended 77 minutes later, with a sniper taking down Huberty. But the aftermath was devastating. 21 people were dead, including an unborn baby, with 19 others injured. In the days that followed, the community of San Isidro grappled with the enormity of what had happened, trying to make sense of the senseless. The massacre sent shockwaves throughout the country, prompting a serious reassessment of how police and emergency services handle active shooter incidents. This tragic event became a turning point, significantly influencing the strategies and preparedness of law enforcement agencies in dealing with similar situations in the future. Year after year, the community of San Isidro comes together in a touching tribute to remember that heart-wrenching day. Local leaders and residents join hands to honor those who were lost, ensuring their memories are forever etched in the hearts of the community. This annual ritual is a powerful display of the community's unbreakable spirit and resilience, even in the wake of such a terrible tragedy. In a beautiful act of transformation, the site of the massacre, once a symbol of deep sorrow, has been reborn as a place of learning and hope. Where McDonald's once stood, there's now a bustling college campus, alive with the energy of young students eager to learn and grow. It's a symbol of the community's ability to triumph over adversity. The memorial at the site 
with its 21 white pillars, each standing for a life lost too soon, is a quiet but profound reminder of the delicate nature of life and the lasting impact of violence. For the survivors and the victims' families, the emotional scars of that day are still present. Time has softened the sharp edges of their pain, but the loss remains a part of their lives. We move forward, but we always remember, is a sentiment often shared, highlighting the enduring nature of such a deep loss. The story of the massacre has been told and retold through movies, books and debates, keeping the memory alive and fueling discussions about the police's actions on that day. This tragic event continues to be a part of the collective memory, a reminder of the past and a lesson for the future. After the dust settled on the San Isidro tragedy, a mosaic of survival stories began to emerge, each narrating the unyielding strength of those affected. These survivors, carrying both physical and emotional scars, stepped onto a path of recovery, their stories echoing the resilience of the human spirit in facing incredible odds. One such story is that of Maria Enelda Diaz. As mentioned earlier, in the midst of the chaos, as she entered McDonald's with her young son, her life was thrown into turmoil by the sudden outbreak of gunfire. Amidst the terror, she found herself outside, her son still trapped inside. The overwhelming relief she felt when she learned of her son's survival was a ray of light in the midst of despair. Then, there's the tale of Wendy Flanagan, a 17-year-old McDonald's employee who found herself at the center of the nightmare. Wendy, along with mothers and their infants, sought refuge in a closet. Huddled together amidst the echoes of gunshots and hushed cries, they waited their futures uncertain in those endless, tense moments. For many, the physical journey of recovery was long and painful. Consider Carla Felix, just an infant then, who miraculously survived a gunshot to the head. Her survival stood as a symbol of hope amidst the tragedy, but it left both her and her mother with enduring physical scars, a testament to their incredible resilience. Yet, it's the invisible scars that are perhaps the most profound. The psychological toll of the massacre was far-reaching. A study later showed that about 12% of those who survived suffered from post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD, to varying degrees. The emotional impact was particularly intense for those who had lost loved ones, those closely connected to the victims, and individuals already facing social challenges. The stories of these survivors and their journey through the aftermath of the San Isidro massacre continue to remind us of the enduring human spirit in the face of life's most challenging moments. In the wake of the San Isidro tragedy, the community embarked on a journey for justice and accountability. The survivors and the families of those who were lost turned to the legal system, seeking a sense of closure and reparation. They filed lawsuits against both McDonald's Corporation and the city of San Diego, citing negligence and a lack of security on the premises. This legal path was challenging, but it eventually culminated in settlements that provided some financial relief to those who had suffered immeasurably. As time passed, those affected by the tragedy found a form of healing in sharing their experiences. Thirty years later, their voices were featured in a news story, a unified echo of survival against the odds. Carla Felix, who was just a baby during the massacre, took part in a documentary, sharing her personal story of survival and recovery, which resonated with many. Alongside these personal tales of resilience, the legal battles raged on. The survivors and families sought justice against the city of San Diego, former Mayor Roger Hedgecock, and Police Chief William Colander. They argued that the police response was lacking in urgency and care. However, the courts ruled that such an unpredictable and heinous act was beyond the foresight of businesses and law enforcement. This brings us to ponder, how can we, as a society, better safeguard our communities against such unthinkable acts? What measures can we implement to ensure that the lessons from San Isidro lead to significant improvements in public safety and mental health support? For those interested in delving deeper into these important questions, 
and joining a community dedicated to seeking solutions, subscribing to our channel is a great way to stay engaged and informed. Thank you for watching and contributing to this crucial conversation.